This is Debbie Dashinger inviting you to join me and some amazing presenters aboard the Galactic Origin Celebrity Cruise to the Yucatan in December. Go to D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash cruise. Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi, this is Debbie. This is Dare to Dream. Welcome to the show. I've got somebody really amazing yet again here today, and I'm very excited to introduce you or reconnect you with Angie Hipple, who is the Judah Channel, and she's going to offer a little bit later some angelic collective channelings, and so definitely stay to the end to receive that gift from her. Dare to Dream podcast won three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards, won the COVR Award for Best Radio Podcast Show, Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it's high ranking under Apple Podcasts. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. And if you would like to take one of the classes or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com. I've got a free gift for you if you'd like to discover what galaxy you're from dominantly because we're all from many galaxies what star seeds you are and how that impacts this particular life you can learn your galactic ancestry i know learning mine had a huge charge trajectory change for me understanding everything down to my physicality my mission why i do what i do some of my strengths some of my weaknesses health issues all of it how you look so go ahead and get your free starseed gift and learn which type you are. It is at debbie-dashinger.com slash starseed, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash starseed. And also there are a few cabins left, I understand, for the Galactic Origins Cruise that I am speaking on in December. Boy, we have been talking about this, all of us who are speaking, and we are so beyond excited for so many reasons about this cruise. If you need a vacation, if you want to end the year well, if you would like to do a December 21st top of the cruise ship meditation for the solstice with us, if you'd like to have all the presentations and its exquisite speakers, very well-known people on board this ship, Join us, galacticoriginscruise.com. Also, some of us, including myself, I will be giving people private shamanic healing energy sessions. So I could name many of the people who are speaking on the ship that I know I would want a private session with. It's one of the rare ever times you'll have access to these folks to do a session and just to hear them speak. So go ahead register. I cannot wait for this plus the land excursions. Galacticoriginscruise.com and be sure to click on my name, Debbie Dashinger, when you register so they know how you got there. Okay, thanks. And I can't wait to see you there. So my guest today, Angie Hipple, is a highly engaging, inspirational speaker with 30 plus years of experience as a woman's group leader and a recording artist. It is her honor now to channel Judah, and she's considered the Oprah of the cosmos. And she invites in a veritable A-list of higher dimensional beings such as Archangel Michael to join in the conversation about human enlightenment, awakening your power and spiritual wisdom from beyond. Angie wrote the channel book, The Answer to All Your Questions. You can learn more by going to the Judah, J-U-D-A-H, thejudahchannel.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Angie Hipple, who Hi, spells Debbie. it. A N J I E to dare to yes. dream. It's great to have you. 
Thank you, Debbie. It's great to be here. So excited to meet your your family, your Dare to Dream family. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. And I know they'll love you. And I love that we both spell our names very different. And, <laughs> yes. and you know, I had somebody the other day say to me, oh, you don't have an E at the end of your name. So sorry. And she said, I really understand that names have frequency. Mm-hmm. I had never had anybody say that to me. And that felt like such an honoring. Because when mm-hmm. I get the D-E-B-B-I-E and pe- people don't check my name, I'm like, oh, wah, wah. You know, it's not really <laughs> who I am. <laughs> yeah. And my name, of course, means angel or messenger. And I received that name at birth. Mm-hmm. Changed the spelling when I got to be a teenager. Because, you know, when you're a teenager, you have to rebel a little bit and, and be different. <laughs> so I changed the spelling then. That's interesting because I changed mine. I was a little girl. I knew right. I am different when I was really little. And I didn't want it to be the D E B B Y I E, all the different incarnations. I was like, nope. So I get it. And that is beautiful that your name means angel. And you were organically by your parents named that. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Somebody was whispering in their ear and they yes. heard. Yes. And, you know, after some long time of working with Judah, I began to understand that I, that Judah is my soul family and that my soul incarnated from Judah that I have an angelic soul. And of course, you know, my husband and my ex-husband thought, uh, no, I don't think that's right. She's not an angel. She, uh, we see her horns. <laughs> so, but it is true that um, I, I incarnated from an angelic group and there are many of these angelic souls out there in human form. When you say that, so one of my big questions I've had in researching you, because I know the word is used as a collective, but mm. I want to know deeper who Judah is, the elements, are there multidimensional elements, are there extraterrestrial elements or yes. elements I haven't even named that are actually part of this beautiful soup called Judah? Yes, there are so many. Uh, so, you know, with a channeling relationship, when you get to know an entity or an angel or group like this, it's kind of like a dating relationship. You know, the first few dates, you just exchange some of the basics and some more surface information. And it takes time to really develop some intimacy and really know them. But what I began to understand over time is that this is a group of 350,000 incarnations from the the soul or the oversoul, which, which they you know, for me named Judah, but the Christ was one of these uh, incarnations. Joan of Arc was one of these. There there are many um, Judah from the Bible, which of course had resonance for me because I had, was raised and and had um, background knowledge about Judah. And he was the raucous uh, singer of the, the tribe of Israel. He was the drummer and the singer. He was the one that led the band. So um, I think that's why they chose to give me that name for them. But basically, the short story is these 350,000 incarnations of Judah, I am, Angie Hipple is just one of those 350,000 incarnations. And they do include many interstellar beings as well. So um, for instance, one of the beings that I channel is um, the Pleiadian sisters, And they are one of these incarnations of Judah in in the future. This, okay. This is yummy information. (laughs) Yeah, so what I'm finding is that as I channel some of the beings that I channel, uh, I tend to have a a real connection that they feel like home, they feel like Mm -hmm. sisters or brothers. And generally that's usually because they are from this collective. And may I ask, outside of the Pleiadians, the Pleiadian sisters, are there other extraterrestrial galactic beings that you can name where they might be? I mean, I understand 350,000. That's extraordinary. But I mean, some of the highlights. Well, some of the, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, if you can imagine if you went to a party or an event with that number of people, but you, of course, couldn't know all of them. Uh, it, just out of time constraints, but there would be some there that you would feel a vibe or a connection with. And so those you tend to keep working with over and over. But one of them that I work with a lot is Lars of Arcturus. 
Um, also, I've worked with some indigenous incarnations, one called Watal. Um, let's see, who else? Archangel Michael I work with a lot because Archangel Michael is Judah's boss. <laughs> He's El Jefe. Uh, so I work with him quite a bit. And, and uh, many others, you know, different interstellar beings. I can't remember all of them. There's been so many. <laughs> <laughs> and we and we unfortunately we kind of forget and can lose touch unless we're really mindful and remember to go back and call on them again and revisit but i also like to work a lot with the ascended masters um with uh, ram das uh, i like to um channel edgar casey sometimes um i've worked with um mahavatar babaji was a surprise recently uh, uh, I was working with someone who has a really strong connection with him and I didn't know that much about him, but I was able to bring, uh, Babaji through for them. So one of the things I've found, Debbie, that's kind of fascinating is, is if you have a passion and a drive and a desire to learn about a certain group or a certain entity, um, that will tend to kind of draw them into your experience. So for instance, um, I was had a season where I was really studying deeply uh, Lao Tzu's work and the Tao Te Ching and just really meditatively trying to drink that into my being. And and one night Chuck and I sat together um, to channel and he said, I see the face of this Chinese man with a beard. And he described him to me and I said, oh, gosh, I wonder if that's Lao Tzu. And sure enough, at the end of our channeling session, Lao Tzu came through with a message. So what I'm finding is, is we can attract relationships with these beings and actually bring them in just through our interest and our desire. And the other thing I've learned is to date, really, there I've never had a request to channel an entity that I haven't been able to channel. I believe that we can all do this and we just don't realize it. Uh, you know, so it's kind of like a, a soul phone, right? It, you or cell phone, a soul phone. With your cell phone, you can ring anyone on the planet if you have their number, and and our soul is like that as well. We can literally dial up any soul in the universe that we we, we want to have a connection with. Um, I've even had uh, been able to channel people's pets for them and and things like that. So it's it's really the the possibilities are unlimited and it can be a little overwhelming. So I personally try to just as much as possible I, I narrow it down to the the beings that really have, feel really in alignment with why I'm here and what I want to do in the world. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. And when you talk about this, these different beings, so later when you channel on the show, does that mean that the shamanistic group could come forward and they would identify themselves or another group, or will it always be under the umbrella of Judah? Judah is very um, happy to pass the mic, mm -hmm. I would say, and that's why we call them the Oprah of the Cosmos, because they're just... They're so loving and delighted to to share. And angels and and these higher dimensional beings, they're just different from us. They're not competitive, and they don't uh, need to hold on to their position or um, their platform. Right? They just share everything willingly mm -hmm. and with so much unity and harmony of purpose. So yes, I mean you you could call pretty much on anyone, maybe somebody even that I haven't channeled before. And, and so far I haven't been completely embarrassed. So um, I was recently on an interview with Alex Ferrari and he asked for Babaji and I thought, Oh no, I've never channeled Babaji before. Um, but you know what? There he was. So I, okay. I try to just stay curious and not worry about have any fears of failing and just try things that's beautiful and you know there's always option b right <laughs> if that right. being doesn't come through there are so many other beings inside of you that are fascinating i can't imagine anyone being disappointed right. well i can't wait that now really cannot wait for the channeling part and i think it's interesting what you mentioned earlier this background in conservative christianity mm. so initially you're skeptical about I imagine, right? Especially that 
depth of religiosity, very skeptical mm -hmm. about channeled messages. Was there a pivotal moment for you? Was there an experience that led you to just surrender and embrace your role as a channel for fifth dimensional angelic beings and beyond? Mm -hmm. Well, when the moment they came through, the, it was so powerful physically and so transformational. I had been through, um, if you had asked me 10 years ago, if you had said to me, well, there'll be a day where you're not a Christian anymore or you're not involved in church anymore, I would have absolutely unequivocally disagreed with that. There was no space anywhere in my mind to consider that I might be anything other than just a follower of Christ. So I was really deeply entrenched in this culture, you know, up through my mid 40s. But when I had an awakening, you know, there was no undoing it. And so for about six or seven years before Judah came, I was going through an intense and painful ego stripping uh, of everything that I thought and believed about life, about myself, about God. Um, you know, it, it was it was very, very intense. And during that time, I had developed COVID and been sick for two years. And I had, during that time, begun to read Enlightened Masters and spiritual teachers and, and listen to folks just like you and was really an intense process. But um, towards the end of two years of being complete, almost completely incapacitated, spending most of my time in a chair, uh, Judah came out of nowhere. Um, my husband and I had been watching at some point during that process, I'd begin to watch channelers because, you know, the, the Christian condition part of me was really freaked out and scared by it. I had been taught really plainly that that was an easy way to pick up demons. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that channeling was like something out of the exorcist that you should avoid at all costs. So, but in my awakening, you know, I became open to it and, and the thing was, when I would listen to some of these channelers, their messages were so practical, so down to earth, so transformative and helpful that it became, they became my friends, these channeled entities like Bashar and Abraham and, and so many others. So at the end of this long sickness, um, which was really a, a big setup by the universe, in that six year period, I, I lost my dad, I wow. had a business um, partner extorted tons of money from us. Um, I lost my marriage at 27 years. There's just a lot of things, you know, midlife crisis uh, type stuff. It happens to all of us. Yeah. But it was a rebirth. And the night that Judah came, the, 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 it was so supernatural and physical and so raw. I, I felt like a, a, drill bit going through my third eye. Mm. I mean, it was as strong and forceful as a battery drill would have been. And I had this pulling around my mouth as if someone was pulling my face. And the, actually the first thing Judah did was they smiled my face. <laughs> <laughs> I was involuntarily smiling and could not stop. And, and then this big, huge voice came through. So what do you do when you're given a gift like that? You can't say no to it. You can't push it under the rug. I mean, there's too much uh, karmic, mm, you know, <laughs> I mean, who wants to have that kind of karma, right? To deny a present like that from the universe. Did they so, explain to you once they came through and you had some comfort level, did they explain to you why your soul made a choice to come through a family, I'm sure it had to do with your family, that would have to do with conservative Christianity or however you got there, but that it was such a big part of your life and mm -hmm. why that was necessary for your soul's evolution before Judah came through. Well, it took a while for all of it to really sink in really deeply to my core level that basically what I began to understand was that I had made uh, an agreement with Judah that I would come in in total darkness and complete ignorance what? and, and under complete deception mm. and that without assistance, I would um, 
that this was my cha the challenge my soul had given to itself to come into this situation and with no assistance go from where I, that zero, I guess you would call it on the level of consciousness to full enlightenment in a lifetime. And there was a, there was a moment uh, some months ago where I felt a total complete breakthrough. I was in a deep, deep state of meditation I, I felt myself inhabit that God state. I don't live in it all the time yet, but I do have minutes and, and sometimes hours where I disappear. I have no awareness whatsoever, whatsoever that I'm Angie or that I'm a woman or any of that. I just feel God in, in me. And when that happens, um, when it first happened, that moment I was telling you about, I, I started shouting and like rejoicing. And I, I said, I did it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> I did it. And it's like, it dawned on me in that moment that my soul had this challenge to go from total deception and religiosity and bondage to full enlightenment in a lifetime. And I just realized that I did it. And it was so exciting. That's extraordinary. That is extraordinary to have all of that occur at once, even the recognition of your soul's choice and that you are able to supersede the darkness and all the other obstacles of unknowing into that one moment so quickly. That seems to me like just another version of a lot of what's happening on the planet right now where exactly. people are waking up and it's not like this very slow experience. It's like, wake up, bam. And I don't oh, mean wow. bam hard. I mean, I get it. The truth, the light, yeah. like all of it. It's so big. Mm. Oh yeah. And it's so accelerated and so intense, you know, and there were a lot of painful moments too. I mean, I had those dark nights of the soul, I had uh, several occasions where I thought, I don't know if I'll get through this. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I might need to check out and try again in another version. But, um, but, you know, I stuck with it. And boy, when the breakthrough came, there was just this amazing realization. And, and you know, Judah's, I think what makes them unique, as opposed to other entities that people work with, is they are totally committed to helping humans mm. go from wherever they are when when they awaken all the way to full enlightenment and Judas shared with me over and over they're constantly casting vision that the whole of humanity will ultimately be what we now consider to be enlightened beings and that that will be the new normal. The new normal on the earth and for humanity will be everyone operating in their full mastery, full mastery, full enlightenment. Mm. And they keep casting this vision. And, and one of the things that is their soapboxes is that we have this mental construct, you know, that only a few people can make it to enlightenment and they must be the people that live in the cave and meditate 24 seven for 30 years. Well, all the, just the ideas that we have from the history of spirituality of how it has to be. And Judah says, no, 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 no. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be accelerated. It, it, all you, all we have to do is surrender <laughs> and give up our identification with the, our false self and our sense of victimization and our ideas, our religious or political, whatever ideas are. And the moment we drop that, we can instantly enter into this enlightened state. So they really want me to encourage people to have, be open to the, a radical accelerated transformation. You bet. I'm with you, Judah. I must have gotten the memo because that is my mission. That is my vision. That is why I do what I do. Yes, on this podcast, but I've had a huge, I've been spiritual since I'm tiny and very much into all this stuff, but I've also been an um, open-minded skeptic, a big eye roller, yeah. especially about UFOs and ETs. And then I had a huge, massive situation happen about 
five, I don't know, five, six years ago. And ever since then, because I had to find out more, what is going on? Why am I being told this? What is happening? It has changed my whole life by virtue of saying yes. And even what I'm doing, I've always been very reticent, really, like transparently, because I want to inspire people. I'm re very reticent about being out there. And I'm right now being interviewed everywhere. I'm emceeing literally on stages around the world, speaking, doing so many presentations and going back to Gaia TV for a second interview, like it's unending. I never pitch myself, whomever is doing that on my behalf. You're doing it. I'm saying yeah, yes, yeah, because it's my piece of the puzzle toward this very Judah vision you're talking about. And I believe in my heart in this. Well, you know what I, I want to pick up on what you said is it's so you had an experience. And when you have a personal, tangible, visceral experience with no one else involved, it's just you and this angel or you and this higher dimensional being no one can take that away from you and it's transformative and so you know i have a little note that is above my desk and i i read it every day every time i open my laptop to get on a call with someone and it says why i'm here it's to create experiences of divine love and freedom so that enlightenment can come and so once somebody has an experience it's theirs forever. And so a lot of times when I get on a call with someone, they want to hear Judah, but I flip the tables on them. Judah flips the tables on them and says, no, you're going to channel Judah today. <laughs> and we get them and they're like, well, I, ca I can't. I'm like, yeah, you can. And I get them to channel Judah and then to channel their guardian angels and whoever else comes through. And, and it's once the, and you know, that's why we read all these old dusty scriptures like the Quran and the Bible and all that. All it is is a story of a person that had a mind blowing, tangible experience with the mm -hmm. divine, with Christ, with God, with the Holy Spirit, with the angels. And that's why it got written down in a book. But we don't need to do that. You're the sacred text. I'm the sacred text. We're we are having experiences that are every bit as valid and even more accelerated than those experiences thousands of years ago because of what's happening on the planet today. And we don't need to immortalize or build structures around those experiences of other people. We need to have our own. That's you right. Know? And when you feel or see an entity or like with me, sometimes I'll hear angels singing with my physical ears. When that happens to you, no one can convince you it's not true or not real. And it transforms you. Wow. That's next level. Angels singing. Okay. I'm just saying, you're welcome to bring that to me too. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you're a singer. I know they'd like to do that for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's beautiful. I want to just ask, because you brought up these sessions with people, and I'm blown away by opening your laptop, seeing that incredible statement over and over again to immediately realign you with why you're doing what you're doing, why you're here, why you're connecting with them. Very powerful. And do you do group in uh, situations ever? Yeah. Is it only private? And if it's also privates, is it always that you ask the person and facilitate them to channel their own information? Just give me a breakdown of how that works, all of that. Sure. Well, I want to give you a metaphor to kind of let you in on how we work. So if you mm -hmm. think about the chakras, right, the, the root, sacral, solar plexus, all the chakras. Now kind of imagine those superimposed on a hot air balloon. And I want you to imagine that the heart chakra is the fire for the hot air balloon. And the roots, sacral and solar plexus are the basket where the sandbags are. <laughs> and then the throat, third eye and crown are the hot air balloon that gives you that lift up into the unseen realm where you get to commune with these beautiful high vibe beings. 
So a lot of people that I meet in this space, they are just ready. They are like ripe fruit falling from the tree. They're like you, they've been doing this stuff for years and they just need a, a, a little, you know, a little fire to, to just have that uplift. And so there are a lot of people that I can help channel immediately, even if they have never, it's never crossed their mind that they would be a channeler. Now, then there are uh, some other people that come, they've got some sandbags in the basket, like the fear, sadness, despair, pride, anger, things like that. And so then I can supernaturally work with Judah to throw those sandbags off to clear. And those are always, those sandbags are the subconscious beliefs that come from our ex conditions and our experiences, our environment. You know, like, I'm not good enough. Um, I, I'm, it's too late for me. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's not enough, enough love for me or, you know, whatever those beliefs are that are birthed as a part of our um, experience in life. And so we help to find those, nab those and throw them off, off board those. And so then the person just naturally mm -hmm. floats upward into an elevated state. And, and then their, their gifts just open up like a flower. You know, Judah taught me that if you can get someone to consistently live in their heart space, all of their higher Claire gifts will open like a flower. So you don't have to pull the petals on a flower to get it to open. It just does its what it does naturally, right? So a lot of all the work we're doing is helping people to raise their uh, vibrational, which is emotional, those two are connected, set points. So if you think about like a your thermostat in the house, maybe you like it on 72. So it doesn't matter how hot or cold it gets on it uh, outside, whatever the weather, the external weather, that set point is going to keep you in a certain place. So, so for an example, like for me, my emotional set point when I hit awakening was sadness, mm -hmm. depression and sadness, because I had been raised to be a good girl, to serve mm -hmm. others and take care of everyone else to my own detriment. So I had a lot of sadness and a lot of repression, repressed stuff. So I could get the new job. I could get the degree I wanted. I could get that new car, have that new other baby, get that new puppy. And I would be happy for a little while. But guess what? I would just gravitate back to that set point, which was sadness. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we do in the judo channel is we're just working with people to move their set point up. So raise the, raise the floor of their level of consciousness and then also raise the ceiling. That is so deep what you're saying right now. That really and, is. And what I've found, and Debbie, you probably will really relate to what I'm saying. So many people that I meet in this space, they've got big, beautiful hearts, but they're top heavy, right? They're all balloon mm -hmm. and, and air, but they've got, and they can't figure out why they're still suffering so much in their emotional state or in their finances or losing their jobs or, or can't find a loving partner. And it's because nobody really has been able to provide for them the information about how to permanently release these subconscious beliefs that are like the sandbags in their life. Cause we know talk therapy won't do it right. We know it's got to be energy and it's got to be uh, done in the quantum realm. And so when we enter a space, whether it's in a group situation or one-on-one uh, what what we're wanting to do is find what is the, the primary belief that they have. If, if we could offload that one sandbag, that would really give them a major lift and major. lift their personal set point. And, and Judah just goes in and grabs it and, and clears it, not just for this lifetime, but in every realm of time and space, past, present, parallel, future realities. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe what they're going through is they can't get pregnant with the child, right? Or, or whatever it is. And we remove that one thing. You know, what Judah says over and over is if you've got the fruit, you've got the root. <laughs> it's so common sense, right? If you've got apples on the tree, 
that means there's an apple tree with roots that go down into the ground. Otherwise, there's no fruit. So when we got the still the bad fruit, no matter how many, maybe it's 10, 20, 30 years we've been on this path, if we still have fruit in a certain area, like, I don't know what it is, like being in debt or or uh, maybe we're high flying um, in all realms of our spiritual life, but our, our re romantic relationships are a screw up. Well, it's there's a root there. And once we get that root and clear it, mm -hmm. it changes and it doesn't have to be hard. It can be easy. Like our, our subconscious mind where, where our super conscious, our super conscious, which is our higher self, which is our eternal perfect aspect. It dwells within our subconscious. And so we tend to can kind of hate our subconscious because it causes a lot of our trouble. But the truth is our, our subconscious mind is brilliant. Our subconscious mind, think about it right now while you and I are having this conversation, our heart is beating, the blood is flowing through our vessels, our lungs are breathing up and down, our eyes are blinking. Our subconscious is brilliant. It runs all these things for me. So, and it does it automatically. So all we have to do is give it the right commands. And when we give it the right instruction from the higher self, then it begins to eliminate these these bad roots that we want, you know. So I'll give you a, a quick example of one. Um, there was a lady that Chuck and I were working with. And, and Chuck and he, is your partner, your husband? Yeah, my new partner. He, he's amazing. He gets the credit for all this stuff because really <laughs> he just held my hand and he also broke all my buttons and all my ego buttons. And he, he did the hard work of... Um, <laughs> gutting it out day to day with my ego. But so I'll tell you this little story on him in our city. They call him the baby whisperer because he's so successful with helping women get pregnant. He's an amazing healer. He's in the 900 range on the Hawkins map in healing. He's just profound healer. I actually met him because my girlfriend introduced us because he helped her get pregnant at the age of 50. She had tried every kind of IVF available yeah. to mankind. And at the age of 50, a friend sent her to Chuck and Chuck had her pregnant in no time. Whoa. So she thought that he hung the moon in the sky. So to tell the story about unconscious beliefs, he was working with a beautiful young woman who could not get pregnant and there was no reason seemingly for it. And of course, he knows if there's fruit, the fruit, there's the root. So he said to her, he said, sweetie, there's no reason why you shouldn't be getting pregnant. I've done this treatment. I've helped so many women get pregnant with this treatment. There's got to be a root, sweetie. While you're laying on the table with these needles in you, I want you to think about what it might be. And, you know, when he came back in the room, she said, I, I remember I know exactly what it was. She said, when I was a very little girl, I had asked for a certain doll for my birthday. My mom gave me a doll, but it wasn't the one that I wanted so badly. And when I opened it and saw it wasn't the doll I wanted, I kicked it. She looked at me and she said, just for that, you'll never be able to have children. I... And she had never remembered that, never thought about it a moment until that moment. Mm. And Chuck said, that's it. That's the root. He energetically cleared it. She got pregnant. Ooh. She got pregnant right away. So we, when we're little, we make these, life hurts us. Yes. And when life hurts us, we make a judgment. The judgment is the response to hurt. And she made that judgment. I'm not worthy to be a mom. I kicked my doll. My mom told me I'm not worthy to be a mom. She made that judgment. It was buried in her subconscious. She had no conscious awareness of it whatsoever. And it was hinting her for having what we wanted. So this is the secret with all the things that we want that we can't manifest. You know, we're in this manifestation game. We know, we understand cognitive, consciously how to manifest. So when we're not manifesting, we know absolutely for certain there's something in our subconscious mind to be cleared. Mm. And when we find the belief in the root system of that, and we change that belief, then our immediately our manifestation changes. So Chuck does that work. And you also with Judah do that work. Yes. I do it through a program called Judah treats. And there was so much demand for it. And, and 
I don't have enough time to do. I do do it personally, one-on-one -on -one in sessions, and I also do it in group uh, settings. But since I'm just one little person, I decided to package it in an audio system. So you can literally just put this in your ear and listen and passively and clear these belief systems. And the way we do that is with Judah's supernatural component, we give commands in the quantum field to, we say, Judah, please locate. Judah, can you see the origin of this problem? It could be in this life. It could be in a past life. Judah, please tag this and treat it and do a massive change history in all realms of time and space. The reason we say tag and treat it is because in our mind, there are billions of experiences in our subconscious mind. Everything you've ever thought, seen, heard, every a conversation you've had is imprinted in your subconscious mind. This, the Buddhist tradition calls this samskaras. Mm -hmm. So our conscious mind can process 40 bits of information per second. Our subconscious mind can process 40 billion bits of information per second. So it's all down in there, right? And so we asked you to, to tag it so we don't lose it, lose track of it again. So it doesn't go back underneath the surface again. We want it to be tagged until it's completely treated and neutralized. Gorgeous. I have the funniest thing to say to you. And oh, I didn't me. even recognize this till you just said what you did about how you treat people. Before the show started, I was telling you a story that I heard someone do a channeling yesterday. It was a vocal channeling with also some vocal activations, spoken activations. And it had a profound impact. I, I've heard so many over the years and I can feel, I do feel the energy, yes. And it's usually very positive, but as I shared with you, I almost fainted. And then once I was able to pass that, I really didn't feel well. I felt so out of sorts. And I told you, Angie, mm. that I realize I need to lay down and listen to something. I need to do something to ground me and come back and integrate. I didn't remember to what you just shared. Do you know what I listened to? What? I listened to Judah and you ah. on YouTube doing the 10 hour sleep think. meditation. The tag and treat. That's it. Oh my God. And I got up after 20 minutes because I had a get back on. I was hosting an event and I get back on and I was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine now. I'm okay. Whatever that was, we, we're okay. We're back. I didn't even yes. realize that was you. <laughs> yeah, you I know yeah. it was you, but I, in this moment, didn't connect. So thank you both for helping oh, me so much through that moment. What a, what a treat. And, you know, sometimes when, when they do this work, you can actually feel the neural networks in your brain popping. Mm -hmm. And then other times, sounds like maybe similar to what you experienced yesterday, I'll almost feel like somebody's given me anesthesia. I feel myself go into this really deep, deep restful state, mm -hmm. almost like I've had a sleeping pill. And then when I come out of it, whether it's 10, 20 minutes or eight hours later, I've, I'm different. I am different. So our subconscious mind is a marvel. And when we invite beings like Judah to, to combine their consciousness with our consciousness, it's like going from, you know, uh, a 110 to 220. I mean, just the amperage and the, yeah, it's like the difference between trying to saw through something or or hitting it with a chainsaw. I'd love to do the channeling now if you're up for it. Uh, absolutely. And can I make a request? Absolutely. I don't have a name, but I was so blown away in the beginning of this conversation when you said that there's even some shamans or shamanic beings. I would not know who to name but I can tell you that I'm deeply passionate about this subject and it's a big part of the awakening that I had was around shamanism and extraterrestrials. And, you know, mm -hmm. I can go on and on, but that's my passion. I would love, like I never get to experience this. I've never had anybody on who can do that. If, even if it's my shamanic lineage or whatever, but if a, a shaman or a collective of shamanic beings would be willing to present and be with us 
today, I would be so honored, really, and beside myself with happiness. Yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah, we will do. We'll just put that intention out and we'll let them come on Judah's heels. How about that? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm ready when you are. Judah's ready. I am I'm good. Yay. Thank you. Super ready. And I'm here. So we'll hold the space for you and you'll let us know. We'll watch. I'm ready, dear. Please go right ahead. We are Judah. We are pleased to make your acquaintance and all of your beautiful friends and family all around the world. And we rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice at making new friends. This makes us very happy. We love the heartbeat and the vibration of all of your beautiful friends and they have, mm, <laughs> they are holding, mm, gluing together very important things in the earth. They are holding open portals and doorways to the unseen realm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And first, we want to share the vision we are giving. This vessel is of an escalator. And down this escalator are coming many, 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 many angels. And this escalator is your beautiful show, my dear. And so this escalator is constantly moving. It is all, it is in a flow state. It is in a flow state like an escalator and down it, through it, because of it come so many angels to work and interact with your beautiful listeners. And we rejoice over this. Oh, now, how can we serve you today? Thank you so much. I wanna ask you at the onset and my big love for that gorgeous way to start this. I felt your joy. I feel it here as well. It made me very happy to hear and do we have shamans here amongst us coming with you or through you? Yes, yes. Let us please then transition to their mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are the shamanic masters. There are many of us. Most of us are unnameable, unknown, incognito, you might say. We like it this way. We are the indigenous peoples. We are the masters of the sacred arts, primarily our... Mm, earthly residents during our lifetimes on the earth were in the South American continent and in Australia. We work together mm. hmm. in every realm of time and space. We work together with each and all of you and all of the ascended masters, which are more nameable and recognizable and as you would say, famous in your culture. But uh, ah, we are the salt of the earth. We are the dirt. We are the dust. We are the stardust. We are the moonbeams. We are the rays of sun. We are the leaves and the trees and the branches in the Amazon rainforest. We are intimately and deeply connected to the earth and to all those who have the discipline and commitment to know us and to reverence the earth. You know, one of the things that I do is speak to people about the importance of you, your gifts, what you have always known since the beginning of time, your abilities to commune with everything, the cosmos, the earth, the plants, the animals, the apus, the mountains, the rivers, etc. cetera, Mother, beautiful Mother Earth. And I would like to hear from your words why are you important and why right now, right now I feel it is very important for people to know about you. 
It feels like part of my mission. Will you explain why it is important to understand you and shamanism and what it can give or gift to humanity for the better and to the beautiful Mother Earth, Pachamama? Yes, dear, we want to share along this. We will say that we are deeply and gravely grieved in our spirit about the disconnection that humans have from the earth, having lost their way to the degree in which they have disconnected from the dirt, the dust, the water, the plants, the animals. And we are deeply grieved by this. Our wisdom is ancient. And this is what we would say. Humanity thinks it needs to know something new, something different, something from its own mind. But we disagree. There is nothing new under the sun and everything that you need for life, for liberty, for happiness, for fulfillment, for health, for your body is already here. It is in the wisdom of the whispers of the wind and, and the trickle of the waters and, and, and the, 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 the smoothness of the stones and in every instinct of the animals. And we are deeply concerned that humans have lost their instinct. You see, their instinct. And even as we shared through this vessel recently, there are, there is a need for a primal cry. If a mother wolf if her children, her young, are being threatened, she doesn't lay down and play nice and play sweet. She snarls, she bares her teeth, you see. And this is love. This is love. This is instinct. And we spoke this message to this vessel recently to encourage her to come back to her instincts. Yes, for many times she wants to play nice. This is her, her Christian good girl conditioning. And this can also be found in New Age cultures. And there we are not saying not to be kind, but we're saying that kindness has many faces and wisdom has many expressions. And one of these expressions are these animal instincts which will preserve the nature of your soul, your true nature. Can you express a little bit more deeply about that? I think that is a very important point and I actually identify somewhat with it. So you're talking about Angie, the being, her, her background and how it manifests as a good girl uh, doing good things. And you're making it very, very clear. You're not talking about caring and kindness and all that. But when you say primal, when you say to really uh, go deep into that, what does that look like? Can you give examples of how we can show up way more healed in that arena? Yes, 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 yes. Well, you see an animal never questions its instinct. When a wolf, as the illustration we were given, if it's young are being threatened in some way, it doesn't go into its mind and think, well, how can I handle this conflict, this, this situation nicely so that no one is offended, you see? Wolves don't think that way. A mother wolf will simply bare her teeth and do what needs to be done because she trusts her instinct. She trusts herself. She doesn't get caught up in her mind. And so this is something we are presenting here. Begin to trust your instinct. It can be even a slight smell mm -hmm, or the tone of someone's voice 
or the vibration in a certain piece of music or the vibration uh, of, uh, of a person's uh, speaking. And, and there's an instinct that's, that's not helpful, that's not okay, that's destructive. And so, but then your mind, the ego mind will take over and begin to rationalize or talk you out of your instinct. And we want each and all of you to be more instinctual and trust yourself. And this is, this instinct is cultivated through being in nature, through touching plants, trees, and animals, lying in the dirt, laying your face upon the ground, release your sorrow and your pent up stress and emotion. Repression, repression is deadly. We are very concerned about the level of repression in society today and the digital cages. Yes. 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 yes I'm receiving all of this. Did your wisdom come from extraterrestrials? I understand since the beginning of time, you have had relationship with star beings and, yes. and, you know, deep relationship like, and I'm using very hilarious 3d earthly terms, but to describe it, spaceships landing on earth, little beings coming out and literally face to face with the indigenous all over the world and with the shamans. Is this true? Can you talk about what they imparted to you or some highlights of what the extraterrestrials bequeathed and shared with you and why you, why you? <laughs> yes. Well, we have had many visits from many different races and most of those were observers because from our, in our time as indigenous peoples, we had not gone so far astray. And so these visitors were happy to observe and learn about our connection with Mother Earth. Mm. But the Pleiadian mothers, they were our star mothers. They seeded us, we are theirs, their children. We are of them, from them, by them the Pleiadian mothers and also our Lyran mothers, yes? And so they were mm, gracious angels watching over our evolution and our care for the earth, sowing into us their ancient wisdom, visiting us on many countless occasions through channeling states, through ceremony and at times through tangible, physical, physical, visceral presentation of their form and also in a, an apparitional state at times. We valued all of their wisdom and insight to us and, and, and we carried on this wisdom and insight through oral retellings and through art, chant, and dance. Mm -hmm. Are there shamanic practices that we can do today to start to heal? Because, yes, yes I would love to hear what they are. Well, first we would say that you are the practice. You are the consciousness, the flow of consciousness through your body as, is, as it is liberated, as consciousness and life force energy flows through your body, liberated, liberated, you create the practice. We don't need you to do what we did. We need you to only flow, merge your consciousness with us and do what is effortless, natural, natural, free to you. Not what is common, not what is familiar, not what you've been told, but what your body wants to do. You see, sometimes people, their bodies want to twitch or shake or dance or, or to rock back and forth and weep or whatever, whatever arises for you in the body, respect and honor that. 
and let consciousness do whatever it wants to do in the body. Let it make the sounds it wants to make. You see, this vessel works, we know, with many to bring forth light language. And this helps the one who is speaking it and the one who is hearing it to disengage the mind and flow. Disengage the mind and, and receive mm, downloads of, of energies, wisdom and information from higher beings. And the mind doesn't really need to know what they mean. The mind has been the source of your troubles, my dears. You know, that's an incredible thing you just said, because recently, I would say just the last year or less, I have, as things energetically are going on around me, I mean, of a very high frequency, my hands have started moving and doing things. I can't even replicate it here in this state, but I can tell you that they are expressing something and often they will start happening. I don't even realize it. At some point I do. And I do give it a, a wide berth of expression because I'm fascinated. I'm always grateful nobody says anything to me about it, but that they, you know, this is just um, some kind of energy. And it doesn't feel like it's a release. It feels like it's a connection with what's going on. Yes, you are allowing high vibrational beings such as ourselves to use your hands to create in the earth what is most needed so you are creating you are like a potter at the potter's wheel yes you see when a potter sits down at the potter's wheel with the clay anything can be formed and so it is it is your desire then and you're you're merging with the beings you are working with to create a new vessel a new container a new container a new container a new vessel for honor for glory for divinity on the earth and so you are right in this to simply surrender your your being to these higher beings which you trust and give your love and affection to them. There is far too much talk of fear about these kind of interchanges. There is only one enemy and it is fear. And when you fear, it causes you to judge. And when you judge, then love has just been canceled. And so if you can trust and relinquish your body to be used as a vessel of consciousness and consciously creating and yes, using your hands and your body in any way it comes to you. You have no idea, my dear, you, you, this experience you are describing, we have given also through Judah has given to this vessel in which she is literally creating all universes and realities which did not exist heretofore. And, and we are able to do this through her and with her only because she is willing to trust and be childlike and play without judging or demanding that there be an outcome or having any expectation, you see. You are, you are, you can, even in this moment as we speak to you, enter the full stature of your I am state. And in it, you can create universes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh. Can you elaborate on the process of removing obstacles to enlightenment and integrating uh, experiences from different dimensional levels? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this wants to switch back to Judah. That's okay. Yes, yes, dear. We love to talk about this. There it is. As the, the beautiful shamans just spoke of, only one enemy, and that enemy is fear. Only fear. And and every fear story that the ego mind tells you um, results in a belief, a belief system, uh, are many beliefs sometimes entangled together. And so when you feel afraid, Lean into love, love the one in front of you, love yourself. If you're confused about how to love, how to express that love, 
revert back to simply loving yourself, love and accept yourself fully in every moment, whether you're in your worst moment, showing your, your darkest side, or in your best moment, showing your brightest side. The obstacle to enlightenment is simply the belief that you can't or you aren't enlightened, which is not true. You are absolutely fully 100% a master, an enlightened master in your inner being. And so all that remains is to remove what has been laid upon that master that you are. Your superconscious is perfect, innocent, flawless, wise, all-knowing. It comes from God. It is God. You are God. Even the Christ said, you are, don't you know you are God's? He didn't say, I'm the only God. Get you, come to me. I'm the source of all things. No, he said, I am the light of the world. And, and in the breath just following, he said, you are the light of the world. You are the Christ. You are the Buddha. You are the embodiment of God. You are the express image of God. Everything else, the things you struggle with, are things that have been laid upon you like layers of paint. Imagine, imagine the most beautiful, exquisite, priceless antique but that antique is is been stuffed away in the basement somewhere because it has layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of paint upon it and so its beauty has been lost forgotten it's still there so the job is only to remove the stories of fear the stories of pain the stories of lack limitation separation when those stories have been abandoned you will find there, here you are, your enlightened self. The obstacle, the only obstacle is the fear of your mind. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you uh, share a, a surprising technique then for clearing these unwanted energies, something you know is particularly effective? Yes. Yes, we would love to do this for you. Whatever is troubling you, you hold it in mind. And you simply ask angels, Judah, please find the origin of this. You see, understand that whatever you struggle with in this now moment, now, now, now is where you clear all of the past in every lifetime, in every realm. So whatever is troubling you, you simply ask angels to find the origin of it in any realm of time and space and to treat it fully and clear it in all realms of time and space, neutralize it, neutralize it and clear that experience from the entire story of your soul. And you will find, whoa, yes, as you say, Judah, tag and treat this. Then the next time you have a similar experience, your ability to respond differently will be in place for this mastery a mastery is evidenced by your full self control over every aspect of your life and any aspect with which you do not yet have this full self control and mastery has an unconscious root. And so you simply say, Judah, please tag and treat this, even if you can't name the origin of it or the exact emotion. It can be as simple as a slight discomfort. We see the root and we know how to clear it. All you need is to give it your awareness. Judah, please tag and treat this. Transform it in all realms of time and space. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so for everybody listening or watching, hearing these precise words, there's enough Judah to go around. So you are infinite, you are everywhere and you are available. Absolutely. And we work, we, 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 we do not have any limitations. We work 24 seven, 365 days a year in all realms of time and space, because why? Because we are God, as you are God, we simply have the experience of fulfilling our God state continuously. 
And for that reason, we can be in all places. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's so beautiful. Um... And a major thing, my dear, that we, we do continuously through this vessel and are doing in this moment is simply to expand in your uh, perception, <laughs> expand your faith about what can be done. Yes, exactly. And we know I you're love feeling that. this. We know you are feeling this. Yes, to, you know, thank you so much because I hear, I really hear what you're saying and I really hear what you're capable of when we call you in and trust me, I will. And I also really hear you saying mirrored back to us what we are also inherently capable of. You are God, we are God, God is God, et cetera. We are one. Yes. And so we are just as capable, but maybe in this 3D form and, and the density that we chose and the lessons we chose, perhaps it's a little more difficult for us, but we can call in the help to change our set point. We can, yes. you can be our angelic helper and we yes. can connect with your guidance. Yes, that is correct. For you see, you see this beloved Dr. Hawkins, who is now one of the ascended masters, and we love to work with him. And during his lifetime on earth in modern history, he found in his gold standard research that the majority of persons only ga gain five points in a lifetime on that set point five points in their growth in personal consciousness but we are here to change that people can literally grow 30 50 100 points in in a month six months a year and hundreds of points in a lifetime they can go from sleeping spiritually sleeping to complete and fully awakened and a very accelerated uh, pace because of the times we live in, but also because the, the faith that this can be done, it was always possible, is now coming to the earth. And that is why we're sharing this message today. We want to increase this faith. We have promised this vessel that we will give her 10 fully enlightened beings through our work. Now, there's more possible than even those, but let's begin with 10. And when, when that is done, then we will expand the horizon again. How can I, Judah, I, I feel this profound mission right now. And I, I'm at least doing the best I can, as far as I know in my estimation. But you're doing so well, my dear. So well, so well. Mm, thank you. <laughs> what can I add? What can I add, subtract, give more of, do differently, share? Because if you can feel my heart, you know that my passion for this subject of shamanism and extraterrestrials, where they intersect, and the reason is why it is so important right now on this planet, that I really feel this knowledge, A, will help us all on a better timeline, a healed timeline. B, will help us to finally become part of the galactic community, the benevolent galactic community. And C, very importantly, to heal humanity and this planet. And so with this passion, my mission, my vision, what can I do differently? I'm so open that I'm not knowing, seeing, doing yet, or what can I share that I don't yet know to share that can help people, that can shift in a big way? Well, we will tell you the vision we are sharing with this vessel about you. You are weaving, you are a weaver at the shuttle. You are weaving masterfully, we would say, a textile. This textile is a metaphor for... Mm, it is a metaphor mm -hmm, mm -hmm, of many, many souls, both on the earth and in the heavenly realms and, and so many ETs, angels, and human souls. You are weaving them together in this beautiful tapestry. 
Mm -hmm. Some people call this the grid, but we are showing it to her as a, as a, a blanket, a blanket that can cover the earth. Yes, a blanket that can cover the earth. And so you are teaching mm -hmm, the souls who are tuning in that they have access to higher dimensional beings, that the access can be personal, visceral, real, transformational, and it can be an ongoing working relationship. And so you are weaving these threads together and it is coming together beautifully. And so each time you see a new and bright and colorful thread, the thread here in the metaphor representing a person, a soul or a being, then just pick up that thread and add it to all the ones that are already there and weave it into this beautiful tapestry. You're, you're doing the work you are sent here to do. You're doing it fully with a big heart. The only thing we would say to add to that is to enjoy it. <laughs> to laugh. <laughs> to laugh, to play, to enjoy, enjoy it. <laughs> that is all we want you to do differently, my dear. Don't take any of it too seriously. Know and trust you are doing exactly what you're meant to do. We only want you to have more fun doing it. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. I love your laughter so much. It is contagious. <laughs> It is felt here. I'm sure it's felt everybody who's watching. Exactly. Exactly. I shall. I really hear that. And I receive that. And I, I will have a lot more fun. And I'm going to ask one last thing on behalf of all of us. Because in the beginning, Angie mentioned changing a set point. Is it possible for you, beloved Judah, to turn tune into us as a collective, me, those here with us live, people listening to the replay, watching the replay? Can you do a transmission for us to alter to a way more positive place our set point? Yes, yes, with pleasure. Mm. <sighs> okay, good. Vilyolia halia tiana ho she viana mahe. Gimme vile hili olia liane he she viti. Ume vili alia tu visedi. Vile di ava hae me leona he. She me me veonta yana hale he ohto. Gimme le he ale hunta ve she na veke yana me he. Thank you, Judah. That sounded like an unbelievable blend of shaman, indigenous words blended with Hebrew. Mm. Oof. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. And you know, oh. sometimes when I do that, I hear them singing along and it's, it's something I can't describe, but it's like 360 degrees. I feel them under me, behind me, in me, in front of me, on top of me. It's just amazing. How do you feel right now? Oh, I feel high as a kite. <laughs> I may not say anything else intelligible. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually blown away when I brought up channeling and like, boom, I'm not used to seeing that. You were there, done in it. Yeah, I and can again, instantly. The, yes, that's yeah. an amazing, zero transition. Everybody can do it. And that's something that they, again, that they want us just to have a new perspective about that, that you can instantly in, enter a channeling state anytime you want or need to. Thank you so much for oh, being the vessel for all of what came through. Are you aware of all of what came through? 
Yes, I, I remember most of it. And, and I may likely forget it as I kind of come down and get a little more grounded, but I, I still feel the joy of it and the, the big picture of it. There was a lot of joy, a lot mm -hmm. of laughter too. And uh, that was really nice to experience yeah. their level of joy and clapping hands and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, they're very what rough. would you like yeah. to share with us um, about your work? Like, what is this about for you? Because I think everyone so gifted is also going through big changes right now. Mm -hmm. What are the changes for you? And what do you anticipate now through the end of this year and into next year? Well, one of the first things Judah said to me is go big or go home. Mm. So one of the remarkable parts of the story is that at the time when Judah came, I literally have nothing tying me, keeping me from doing this work wholeheartedly. I have all the resources that I need. Um, you know, if I spent all the money I wanted to every day for the rest of my life, I, I would never need, need more. I, I will die with money in the bank. Um, so we're completely resourced. Our health is resourced. Our finances is resourced. We're just here to show up. You know, it's very simple. Judas told us, just show up, love the person in front of you. If it's one person, if it's a room of 5,000 or 10, it, it really doesn't matter. Just let that love flow. And the, you know, the one-on-ones are incredibly powerful, but the more people that we get in the room, the more power Judah comes through with, which is really extraordinary to behold. Um, but we just take any opportunities that are afforded to us. We, we just show up. It's just that simple. I'm glad you took this opportunity. What, oh, um, Angie, this is Dare to Dream. So what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? My, my future dreams and goals are to see hundreds of people go from their point of awakening to fully enlightened masters through the work of the Judah Channel mm -hmm. and, and to have a really accelerated transformation to really drop really quickly any fears or karmic baggage that's holding them down to bring them into direct co uh, conversation and relationship, communion and intimate relationship with their angels and their higher self and, and to see them operate in full mastery in every area, their finances, their relationships, um, their intellect, their health, and, and to be fully enlightened beings. Yeah. Mm. I'm still feeling that transmission, actually. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the cool things that Dr. Hawkins taught us, which Judah referred to, yeah. he did gold standard research on enlightenment and consciousness. And before he left the earth, he said that if every one person, one enlightened person counterbalances neutralizes, counteracts the negativity of 70 million people living in sadness, fear, and despair. So that's the primary work that we're here to do to help one person fully achieve their enlightened state. And just by them breathing in and out, doing what they do, driving, doing the laundry, going to work, that one person counteracts the negativity of 70 million people on the planet. This is how we transform the planet. One enlightened person at a time. Wow. That's incredible numbers. And that's very, very hopeful. Mm -hmm. so people who would like to get the book or mm -hmm. learn more about what you do, where would you direct them? They can go to the judachannel.com and we have a tab there. This is start here. And we've got some free offerings and we have a course which will take you from where you are to that door of enlightenment mm. um, we have judah treats which helps you to eliminate uh, the subconscious beliefs that um or you know anything you're manifesting you don't want and you can come for sessions or events call me up i'll show up for your event if i'm able to be there oh. i will be there oh mm. and oh. we have we also have hundreds of free videos on um, the YouTube, ju the Judah channel um, with lots of really good stuff there. Well, that's beautiful, Angie. Thank you so much. Um, 
whatever this is going to be. This felt like an opening to me to connect mm -hmm. with you, to connect with them. And maybe there'll be more magic in the future. I really honor who you are and all, all your agreements that you're fulfilling. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And you as well, my dear sister, all of that back to you. And folks, again, you can go to the Judah, J-U-D-A-H channel.com. And there's so much there for free and also the book and to book sessions. And I end today's show with this quote from the Archangel Michael channeled by Angie Hipple. The quote is this. When I come, I'm not coming to play. I'm coming to slay. So if there's some housekeeping, something you really need to get rid of and be done with, I'm your guy. And I think as always, and this is me speaking, Debbie, you need to just ask. Angels are always waiting just to be asked so they can help. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Please do so every time you leave a comment, you like, you subscribe. It ups the matrix so that the people who really want to watch this show need this information right now are just waking up or are woken. This is the channel to do so. So every time you subscribe, so simple because it's for free, you push it in front in the most loving way of people who really want to hear this. My show next week is going to be with the amazing Marie Diamond. Yes, she is back. The Feng Shui master originally seen in the movie, The Secret. And now Marie has her own Feng Shui TV show on Apple TV. I'm so excited to host her again. She really brings it with a lot of information. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for this beautiful channeling. And just remember, I think the, of all the many takeaways we received today, one of the most masterful ones is we have a new tool in our tool belt. We have Judah. So you can call on Judah, tag and treat this. Take it. Delete it from all realms, all dimensions, and transmute it into the light. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Always an honor and a pleasure.